Berlin. Hour seven of garbage day. Hour You're still here. Day. You're still In the room here. This hour we have hour we Adam Bozart. Adam Bozart. And our artist for this and hour is for this hour King is Calamari. King Calamari. <laughs> Uh, welcome back. This is uh, hour seven. Uh, a couple seven. of bit people's business, business uh, I want to take care of just off the top. Uh, we are uh, in here raising money for the National Network of Abortion Funds. It's going. Hold on, I need to fix an echo. Okay. <laughs> Fix the echo. Fix the okay. Echo. Am I echoing? Okay. Am I echoing? Uh, no. Oh, I see. Oh. Okay. Great. Um. Okay. So yes, we are raising money for the National Network of Abortion Funds. Um. And uh, we are definitely on pace to do better. Uh. Maybe we just should have picked worse documents last year to just really drive that total up. Once we get to the five thousand dollar <laughs> mark, uh, Frank West will be playing something that is uh dog shit. Um. In the uh, second panel. Um, but, uh, Adam, uh, last time, la- last marathon you did, what did you do? It was some sort of your solo hour. I found that, well, I, w- I, when I was a blogger for a bit, I, we, I did this piece about a, uh, a Craigslist ad that was like trying to do the, uh, a real life version of it was Superman, the reality show. And the person had oh, come funny. up with basically a real life version of 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 everybody from the dc universe and um was basically it was like a five thousand word wall of cocaine text um basically like i came up with the best idea ever and i need somebody who understands my vision to write it down sweet uh yeah and so this year uh this is something that uh i've personally seen this flyer before um i don't know if this guy i don't think this guy's from minnesota but i think that he might be i don't know he might get around but definitely he's left leaflets um and (laughs) uh and and they're uh very long black and white screeds uh and his screed is uh his assertion uh that stephen king murdered john lennon um so i'm hoping by the end uh of this hour you'll be able to i guess probably put him in jail like i mean because murder is illegal right there's no statute of limitations so (laughs) of course yeah and we want to catch this guy if he's you know because it's john lennon it was one of the is the first beetle He's a, yeah, he's a he's a well well liked guy. So uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, get out of here and uh, observe this truth from you. Sure, of course, everybody. <laughs> it's time to start with this document from Spooks. Thank you, Spooks, for uh, for organizing it. This is part one, the part where Stephen King murders John Lennon. Uh, the section is called "Welcome." Hi, my name is Steve Lightfoot. Regarding what you may have not read or heard about me, let me assure you that this is almost all jealous hogwash. The government has its army of character assassins who want to scare you off of my findings by mischaracterizing and marginalizing me with untruths and slanted opinions. I am 100% pure American hero who discovered hard evidence in John Lennon's murder and is brave enough to go public with everything until the world knows and Stephen King is jailed for murder and other portrayal of me is designed to scare you off the truth I have uncovered. So, uh, let's see. At present, May 19th, 2015, I am a 61-year-old athletic, young-looking man who knows more about our sick planet than most of all of you do. I gave up a dream of playing professional golf after my discovery of government codes in major news magazines that linked our government and a horror writer to John Lennon's murder took over my life some 33 years ago. The biggest news story since, I'll say it, since Jesus Christ. I'll say it. (laughs) 
It has not been so well received by my so-called fellow human being. Singular. In fact, I learned that when it comes to grappling with our collective crime of killing John Lennon, all of you people act as though I caught all of you on Lennon's murder. And maybe that really is also the case. So not only did Stephen King murder John Lennon, everybody murdered John Lennon. It was suicide. Um, let's see. Uh, beep, 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 beep. Uh, of course, Yoko is a government bitch. Not nice. Who still babysits the cover up in New York like the Jew. You know what? Enough of you. Okay. You can blame the CIA all you want, but you're not going to. I know she's Yoko Ono, but you're not going to call her that. Sorry. I'm going to skip ahead to your C thesis. As the messenger of this, the biggest news story in 2000 years. <laughs> That's a long news cycle. I have a unique perspective that must escape probably all of you so-called normal citizens. This guy's so arrogant. I actually do know things that nobody else knows about this world. You people and the stew we all share. In a nutshell, I'd say that the hero, the Jesus, the Gandhi, the John Lennon, the Steve Lightfoots of our lives <laughs> are the single most important and valuable things in life any human race can have. Like asking you personally to invent the light bulb. Yay! Thank you for money. Like asking you personally, to invent the light bulb without the help of Thomas Edison or anything else. You cannot move forward as a species with the help, without the help of the hero. And our government kills the hero every time and do so terrified of what will happen to their schemes if they do not. Uh-huh. So afraid of the hero is our government that they aren't satisfied with just killing him in or her in cold blood, but now they feel the need to make sure a nightmare of evil is foisted on you, the stupid, silent, apathetic public, by arranging for Stephen King, the opposite messenger of Lenin, to kill Lenin and then take over the culture as if the powers that be who purportedly worship the turgid human phallus as their idol, like the Masons allegedly do. <laughs> and he, he, allegedly? He doesn't know for sure. The other perverse cults that rule our lives beyond the scenes felt the need to turn back the clock on evolution and undo all the good John Lennon did using the eraser of Stephen King's depraved message of fear and hatred. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. He keeps on moving. There's a section called 20 Questions under this uh, heading called King's Motive, King's Contrition. Um, just want to make sure. Uh... Oh, yay! I was right. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much for everybody who's donating. And Victor, you're happy that everybody. Oh my god! Victor, you're happy, right? Yes. Yes? Yay! Okay, yes. good. Yay! Victor, calm down. Oh my gosh! I am. That's. Oh my goodness. Where is all of this coming from? Is this just to keep me from unveiling the truth? Is everybody just donating all of this money to keep me from unveiling that Stephen King, with a PH, <laughs> murdered the best Beatle who moved us forward evolutionarily? I guess we'll see. I'll keep going and see if I get cut off by the Hanson brothers. 20 questions. Adam, do you mind if I uh, come in for just a second? What happened? Uh, I just wanted to point out uh, the all of those mbops are basically from a single source. Oh, well, what was that? 
Uh, that was Entropic Decay. Uh, Entropic Decay with an amazing, amazing donation of five hundred and thirty-five dollars and eight. Wow! Thank you so much, Entropic Decay. <laughs> Just, thank you for buddy. Yes, of course. Get a bunch of sixty nines in there. Thank I, you so much. Oh, nice. I do not appreciate that you're trying to keep me from unveiling the truth, but. <laughs> keeping you from it it's really they really cool. do not want me they don't want me to okay so why did stephen king murder john Lennon? we're gonna find out <laughs> in, in the first place if you study king's facial features his mouth bears the traits of an ape broad lipless upper lip small pug nose i think king is a less evolved human being than the rest of us and was ideally suited to commit such a heinous act against mankind. He had you know, like that smart monkey in the Hellboy comics. He had more reason than others to be jealous of extremely evolved John Lennon who, you know, was some sort of seven foot tall bird person. Uh, they were opposites, both physically and politically. Uh, moreover, King had a huge chip on his shoulder against all mankind following his experiences as a youth in Maine. Well, I would too. His father left him at age two and his peers rejected him and teased him like the father he portrayed in Carrie who got. What? Like the character he portrayed. Yes, yeah, Stephen King was in Carrie, like the character he portrayed in Carrie, who got her revenge by burning her tormentors in an auditorium. Yeah. I will not be silenced. I will not be silenced by your generosity. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, let me go ahead because he keeps he explains Carrie. Uh, he crazy explains Carrie. Um, so what does Stephen King think about your evidence and claims? Uh -huh. Well, in 1992, my first of several visits to Bangor, Maine, I met a man who owned the downtown bookstore that stole Stephen King's books and novels. He specialized in selling personally autographed copies. His name was Scott or Alan, I think, but maybe another name. <laughs> Crack research. It turns out that this man was one of King's best friends. I was waxing idealistically with him once, explaining that after King is jailed, I would trot him out of his cell. I would trot him out of his cell occasionally to appear on the same TV stage with me, doing several reversal skits. Him playing the part of the responsible citizen who wants the truth to get out, and me, the average slob who doesn't care one way or the other. Wow! So this guy's gonna turn this revelation into a sketch show. And I thought I was delusional uh, that it would be good rehabilitation for King and eye opening for the public. This friend of King cut me off in exasperation and blurted out. He's afraid he's going to fry. So that's what King really thinks about my evidence and expose uh, that the system will kill him for killing John Lennon presumably to keep him from telling the world what else he knows about our evil government. In 1999, a van accident almost killed King, and the driver who failed <laughs> oh, was found dead just a few months later. Uh, when I was met King in when I first met King in 1992, oh, wow, a showdown already. I was playing my guitar downtown, singing a political song about him in front of that same bookstore. <laughs> oh, my God. I wish. I wish there was a recording. He walked towards me, glanced at my photo emblazoned van <laughs> with his matching face getting John's autograph, and he had an angry glint in his eyes, and he was shaking his finger threateningly at me, uh, and I ignored him and just sang louder so everyone would notice our first encounter in the flesh. He got very contrite and crouched low to whisper to me, and he said, to to take care, I I want you to take care, and then he sauntered off, realizing I wasn't going to give him the time of day. The unspoken message behind his voice suggested to me he was trying to say, "Don't hate me, please." 
You're right, and I was wrong. Don't hate me. Just don't hate me, please. I don't care about what others think, but I just want you to know that I'm sorry about what I did, and I care for a great deal, and you just don't hate me. In just a few seconds earlier, I thought I might have to jam my guitar neck up his throat because he was upside down if he tried to attack me. It was our only meeting in life, and that's just what happened. And him walking away, me, my back bravely turned away from him. Subsequently, he may have tried to bribe me to quit my story, which is explained on my website. So, um, you kind of get the idea, uh, everybody listening, that uh, Stephen is uh responsible for john lennon's death and uh now spooks also has mentioned that uh he's got some other non uh non john john lennon stephen king related material that is uh on his website uh, this is a uh, part two rorschach's journal this is uh steve's amazing childhood uh oh boy I know I was loved by my parents. They were born in the Depression and worshipped money to a fault and were st stern disciplinarians who used the belt. But I felt all was well. It was all I knew. I'm sure they did the best they knew how. True love may not have been part of my parents' lives, but they did seem to like each other. Not unlike a lot of married couples, I think my life was relatively normal. Of course, it was not. <laughs> Twist. It was complete. I was completely normal until my academic prowess caught the attention of my mentors who let me know I was special. Indeed, I was lecturing the eighth, the eighth graders uh, as a second grader about dinosaurs even offered a speaker's platform. <laughs> Though I seemed like the only kid who didn't know how to read my first day of first grade, I was books ahead of the class in no time, having learned to read from Treasure Island at my father's knee. I was also absolutely the best artist in the whole school hiding my work with my hands to avoid the gawks of other classmates. Learning I was gifted, even high school superintendents perhaps gave me a big head, but I resented that fact. I missed being normal. A lot. As a junior in high school, Dick Nixon, that's right, my geometry teacher, told us on the first day of class, no one has ever trisected an angle with just a compass and a straight edge. And I thought, well, how hard could that be? After a few weeks later, uh, after learning how to uh, do the same with a line segment, I tried the same principles on an arc or an angle and found it a distinctive bias, large, medium, and small. I, right away, decided to reverse the same bias only to the other way after establishing the exact point to start my butterfly reverse image on the opposite side. I now had to equal arcs going in opposite directions, much like the opposing plies on bias ply tires, and found two sets of large, medium, and small divisions, making four instead of two marks in the arcs. Perhaps one can bisect an arc. I merely bisected both sets of marks, and voila, spelled wrong. Perfect tr trisection. Mr. Nixon, I, when I made a trip to his house one night to show him, was shunned. <laughs> Sorry, was stunned to to see my method worked on all angles, obtuse and acute, and told me I'd be famous if I could write out why it works. Too much bother over something so ridiculously obvious and easy in the first place. I had more exciting projects to do than any math-related jibber-jabber. In 1976, I recalled Paul Harvey, the late radio announcer, telling the world about someone solving the same thing uh, just how I did six years earlier and knew I must be a genius. In fact, by then, my IQ scores ranged 
from 120 in grade school to 165, my last one in college. That's Einstein level sick, crazy people. By the way, I beat Einstein and Newton in that one area of math, or geometry, I suppose, and I did it in 10 minutes, first try. You know, when they all tried to do it and failed. Well, while having to toot my horn now in this regard, it should be mentioned that my SAT scores put me in the top 3% in language and the top 13% in math. The math part I guesstimated, frankly, as it's not my shtick. Any, <clears throat> again, I'm pointing out why it is that you, the public, hate admitting it when someone else has a better answer than the masses and how it is a form of your insanity and self-destruction. I despise having to toot my own horn, really. I'll take this opportunity to include that at the age of eight, I knew that the public's conformity of working a 40-hour week was in itself a form of mass insanity. It was my very first independent thought that made me wonder about all of you. Are you all insane? No wonder. I was so into the Native American way of life in third grade running around my neighborhood in a loincloth and a bow and arrow. I was wearing the bow and arrow. <laughs> Uh, modernity pales in comparison to the way mankind lived for tens of thousands of years. Money has enslaved and blinded all of you. Here I was, a doctor's son with a Lincoln and a boat in our driveway, and I knew it was not as good a life as the average Indian in the 12th century. I knew it. In fact, looking back at my siblings' rivalry against me, I realized that it was their shame of self as much as their jealousy of me that propelled them into acts of violence against me. The worst thing that I ever did to Mike was catch him masturbating once. That's it. The worst thing I ever did to my sister Laura was let her see me in the buff once. That's it. Mostly, though, I was just setting the bar higher than they felt like reaching. They hated my confidence and abilities. I wasn't showboaty about it at all, really. It was just obvious. I'm reminded of how Galileo was tortured into retracting his notion that the Earth revolved around the sun and that the Earth wasn't flat. Woo! Anyway, um... There's some more uh, sections here about Steve uh, that Spooks has laid out for us. And I really want to get to some of the ones that he starred. Um, there's pages from uh, Steve's diary, and one that he starred is called Steve's Open Letter to Miley Cyrus. March 3rd, 2016. Miley, oh Miley. Miley Cyrus, of course, coming out denouncing Donald Trump and, let me just guess, supporting Hillary Clinton. Hilarious. Somebody, please get Miley Cyrus to read this entry if she hasn't already noticed my website emblazoned van rolling around near her hometown of Calabasas, California. Miley, I love you, and you remind me of a girl I once knew and fell in love with. As good-looking as you, in fact, looked a lot like you, in fact, and had your fire and spirit. This woman, who was 19 at the time, when I was 23, ugh, absolutely profoundly changed my life. I absolutely admire that you are proactive politically, and I believe you think you are right. I believe that. You are wrong about both Trump and Clinton, and as much as I'd like to rub noses with you and convince you otherwise, please allow me to explain why. Here, one of the two Hillary is more likely to assassinate you, or do you unto you what George Bush did to the Dixie Chicks after they spoke out against him? 
crash their career. I used to trust politicians on face value. And I learned that just can't do that. Yay! Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Bortles in his donation says, bring back the Football Congress jerseys. Um, It's on the record now, Bortles. Uh, And let's see where we at. I got it. I only got one screen open at a time. I'm like a noob. Hillary and Bill Clinton are exactly in bed with the Bush family and their boss, the Rockefellers. Remember the Bill Clinton and George comma H.W. Bush tour that went on for years a decade ago. It's a lot more than just that. The powers that be, the establishment, use a tag team of Republicans and Democrats alike to fool all of us. They're on the same side, just the side that Hillary is on kills people like you, Miley. She is a con man uh, woman. And speaking uh, of women, I think your woman power ideas is why you like Hillary and that you'd like to be a president someday. I hope you do, Miley. I hope you do like to run for president to be president someday. I really do like you. I also know that you are naive as can be about what you're walking into. Let me spare you the embarrassment of hitching yourself to a con woman like Clinton. Let me take you to school on this, please. (sighs) I thought I'd be over it, but I'm not. As for Donald, he is a better man than we, the Lennon killing stupid public deserve. Hey, buddy, don't drag me into this. He is a better candidate than we deserve. In fact, he is a real deal as far as I can see, and I'm not crazy. I like Bernie Sanders, too. I think both will heal and strengthen America someday. Uh, if you. If Donald Trump choose you to be his vice president someday, I wouldn't be surprised. And remember, I'm on the side of Donald Trump. He is that cool. You may not meet the age requirements that for that scenario, though. Heads up, girl. I love you. And not just in the way that a red-blooded man would mean. I really do wish you the best in life. Yes, Not in the way that men usually say I love you. I actually love you. The way I see things is that the Soviet slash world order takeover of America group, the RNC and the neocons and the Democrats who they own, who are bashing Trump the hardest, quote, Oh my God, all our work of shrinking America to fit into the new world order about to be confronted by a man of change who will make America great, comma, again. Oh no! That's what I see, America. It's you and Trump, or you and Bernie Sanders against the establishment and no one else. All the rest are establishment traitors to what America is all about. Uh, let's see. I'd like to visit Steve goes to Maine. It's another entry uh, in his quest to alert the world that Stephen King, in fact, murdered John Lennon. It starts like this. Stephen King's hometown of Bangor, Maine, feels sorry for him and now wants to protect him. Yay! Victor, be quiet. I was there several times for many months at a time, and they never challenged my claim. I remember how thick the tension was in a Denny's diner in Portland, Maine, when the whole room knew it was I with the van and claims against King. (laughs) It was as if they resented the fact that their behavior towards King as a child helped make him the monster he is and felt as if I were exposing all of them, too. It was quite a scene. The unspoken exchange of feelings again. The tension so thick, 
you could cut it over my hammy. The tension of mass resentment of the truth hero. Me. Uh, I recall how certain teachers at the University of Maine orchestrated a mass of students to usher me away from the speaking area by rushing me like a marching band. (laughs) Get him! I recalled saying to them that the following year when they asked me for advice, quote, don't have sex with your relatives. Harumph. My last visit there, I was amazed how mind-controlled they could be. I agree. Thank you. Insane. Somebody, oops, someday it will be called the banger syndrome. Mark my words. Pure human evil unmasked. I recall how strangers were caught ripping down my posters advertising my rally at Pacific Beach, California in the 90s. Not police, but young, regular people, sincerely afraid of my demon- that my demonstration might succeed. Jealous, boot-licking, cowardliness, and hero envy, period. I recalled how I was egged. Literally. <laughs> I was not figuratively egged. I was egged, literally, while standing outside a Stephen King book signing in Santa Cruz, California, with my very long sign that read Stephen King is a murderer it's true or he'd sue the entire people of Santa Cruz were joining King later that night the entire people after I was arrested and jailed all broadcast on national TV news and all major newspapers me being branded as stalker of King The whole crowd listened to King brag. I guess we knocked a few shingles off his roof, huh? After two days in jail, I was released, having never been charged at all. All of this satanic behavior will be showcased in my four-part movie. So, but there's more. At UC Berkeley in 1984, I announced to the crowd... (laughs) I announced to the crowd that my father had just been killed in a plane crash that girl is my bestest favorite person in the whole world bump she girl. in no way contributed to my dialogue yay bump girl <laughs> that's a very specific sound bite you know i'm i'm sorry to pull back the curtain victor's not really here this is it's all sound bites but uh that's a very specific one Uh, where is my place? 1984. My father died in a plane crash. Suspiciously occurred on the 10th anniversary of Rick Nixon's resignation. My my geometry teacher's re- resignation, not the president. And just weeks after I got a threat slash warning letter from a horror writer, handwriting analysis would reveal years later that it was from Stephen King, comma, himself. What did the 1984-era student body of liberal Berkeley campus do? They squealed and snickered with uncontainable glee, the kind of laughter that burps and squeals out from the one in spite of trying not to. Dozens of them at once. And now, section. this section is called Steve Lightfoot Saves Celebrities' Lives. This is from his entry in um, this is from his entry in uh, August 27th, uh, 2014. Neil Young and Justin Bieber should be on high alert regarding their lives. Lookalikes for both are found in the cast of Under the Dome, Stephen King's CBS sponsored series lately. Maybe even David Bowie should be on alert as well. I already pointed it out last week. Lookalikes for Lee Harvey Oswald and Eric Snowden already exist among the cast as well as a younger looking version of me. What I doubt, what I doubt many of you are aware of is that Dead Ringers for Elvis, Buddy Holly, Jim Morrison, and John Belushi are found in the cast of King's movie Christine. 
about a car that lives via its rock and roll playing radio. In fact, the Jim Morrison lookalike was wearing exactly the clothes John Lennon was wearing when King shot him. Only it was a car on fire that killed him, not a gun. All of these rock stars, including the car, the rock star car, were killed off in the movie. King likes to play riddles on all of us with his production, right down to cast selection. As most of you are probably aware of, I saved Bruce Springsteen's life in the mid in the mid 1990s when I got on du- when I got on WABC talk radio and warned the listeners that King was stalking the boss, perhaps to also kill him. In fact, King was sharing the same lunch tables, rehearsal stage, and backstage areas and more with Bruce during, I believe, 1996. At least during my radio spot, warning to the listening world, I believe that I called that that call busted up that scene. Good for Bruce. So now all of you know why Bruce Springsteen stopped cranking out his career. <laughs> what? So now all of you know why Bruce Springsteen stopped cranking out his career. You know the guy who stopped cranking out his career in 2014? I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Why get killed by an airheaded, ingrate, hero-killing public for it? Now, I'm in the business of saving Justin Bieber or David Bowie, who both resemble the brother of the girl first killed off in King's series, as well as Neil Young, the obvious lookalike for a guy named Lyle. So, you know, the government is in Stephen King's corner, where all of this cloak and dagger is concerned, still saving celebrities and entire societies in spare time while breaking my John Lennon murder expose, the biggest news story since Christ. News story since Christ, just a, a fact. What are all of you dildos doing to help? <laughs> oh boy. Section This section here is called Ice Cream. March 24th, 2016. <clears throat> In closing, for now, and at the expense of sounding like a scientist, anthropologist, let me remind all of you how you really behave in real life in real important issues, even before I stumbled onto my evidence in July of 1982. That's right. You've all been denying me all this time. I couldn't help but notice the ocean before me in Pacific Beach, California. Not the ocean ocean, but the ocean of pedestrians, all licking ice cream cones as if they were all in a musical, all licking ice cream on cue as if to make some kind of point. You know, I think Charlie Todd and the Improv Everywhere people are probably not too far away. You see, they were all going through this exact same... Yay! They were all doing the umbop. Thank you so much, everybody, for your donations. It it cannot be said enough. Uh, I just want to make sure that now, while nobody can interrupt me, to say thank you, thank you for your donations. Please get everybody that you know, watch and tune in. We'll all have a lot of fun. We'll all donate and make sure that people can get health care that they need. Now, let's go back to actual crazy stuff. The ice cream. Oh, yeah, Mark. I'm, I, was gonna get, I, was, I was going to get to my point about Mark David Chap. I promise. 
So, okay. They were all licking ice cream cones on cue to make some point. You see, they were all going through this exact same angst and despair I was going through over the gruesome fact that Mark David Chapman, his 60-day psychiatric evaluation, now over a year behind schedule, was obviously not going to stand trial for killing John Lennon. It had been well over a year and not a peep from the media about anything. It, uh, everybody. <laughs> Everybody in Pacific Beach felt the need to lick their enormous psychological wounds at the time. I, myself, was in the habit then of scrounging marijuana roaches I'd find on the sidewalk, eating Snickers candy bars, and having expensive milkshake once a week. The main difference between me and the rest of Pacific Beach then was I was spending my whole day listening to Beatles on my Sony Walkman while I rode around my bicycle 35 miles every day, pedaling away my anger. That I took that I took such a sojourn from the life I knew before says something about my character that money mattered less than enjoying the best music of my life. Before the world made me callous. Oh no, Steve, little teenage Steve. Oh no, teenage Steve Whitefoot. Like everybody else, I knew that the government probably killed John Lennon. And I needed to grieve like all the other ice cream cone licking perverts around me. I had not. Uh, had I not had the profound dream days before my fine about that girl I knew from Georgia, you'll have to find it if it's still on my site. Who knows if I'd have wound up like I did at the local library that fateful day at all. The way it all unfolded, almost like it was a scene right out of the Bible. It was an unforgettable experience to a to be a pawn like that. Also, remember Reagan and the early days with his cabinet and White House staff all eating Ronald's favorite brand of jelly beans. It was a real news item. It was how Reagan faced the public. He had just deified, defiled, and ruined ruined for the first few months of his administration. Huh? He was riding a sugar high to keep his face from turning into a bowl full of scowl. A bowl full of scowl. A bowl full of scowl. Even Reagan knew that what a monstrous thing he had just done. Killed the Beatles. <laughs> Well, it looks like I uh, killed all of the Beatles. Wow, ugly. Hopefully, you will all realize what that what helpless animals we all are and at least step up to my level of responsibility and expose and jail Stephen King this year. That's right, you former ice cream cone licking perverts you'll all just have to grow up like i did this year people i'm counting on you to rescue the messenger and save yourselves to be continued so then the talent agent says that's a hell of an act you got there what do you call it <laughs> the aristocrats uh boy oh boy um there's more some crazy stuff from uh our our friend uh uh Stephen Lightfoot uh what is this note from Spooks the crazy buffet this is this is selected articles from his blog that aren't explicitly about Stephen King murdering John Lennon pick whichever you like they're all good uh Here's a good one. Starts off with a pretty good title. Obama terrorizing me via tickets. Barack Obama, the great deceiver. I have come to learn 
is absolutely trying to kill me after first setting the stage with a host of phony traffic tickets to explain away why it was that I was killed in a head-on accident with a large truck someday in the future. George Bush did the same thing, minus the pre-ticketing, in 2007 when I was almost killed when a woman ran a red light doing almost 60 miles per hour. It's explained below and in on other chapters. I helped get Obama elected, and I halfway trusted him until I learned that even the courtroom antics include overt conspiracy and meddling as evidenced in my latest visit to the Oakland, California court where the commissioner, Carter, showed up fully one hour late, presumably to get a briefing on how to convict me first. He gave me one minute stare down from the pulpit before proceedings began. Uh, it was. It took place in a church, I should say. An hour late, and then I was called almost first. I made a motion to, demi- do, to dismiss because I was deprived of a speedy trial due to the officer's five-month delay to enter my ticket into the system, requiring me now to drive 500 miles each way from San Diego, my new residence. He denied my motion, saying that he had up to a year to present the ticket. My second motion to dismiss due to discriminatory discriminatory prosecution, he interrupted after I had just began it and denied it without being heard. After I got home, I noticed several errors in the court report, which claimed that I gave up my right to a speedy trial, that I stipulated that this commissioner was approved by me, and a few other glaring lies. In fact, after the commissioner asked me if I wanted to give up my right to a speedy trial, and I just looked at him, dumbfounded and speechless, and he then told the clerk to schedule a date within 45 days for trial before I could speak. This dishonorable commissioner... I will try to remove from hearing my case. I am seeking out. Yes. Oh my gosh! Thank you so many umbops this hour. I uh, it it's an embarrassment of riches. Thank you so much, everybody. The dishonorable commissioner. I will try to remove from hearing my case. I'm seeking out pro bono attorneys to help me defeat all these malicious tickets and eventually sue California for traumatizing me with their 30-year terror campaign against me. And now I know that Obama is secretly behind all this. His mask has fallen off, but good. So far, I have not given up. I'm really sorry I'm here right now. I'm sorry, Victor. That may change soon. Uh, New topic. Darwin versus Bible. Because the above, and this is all still part of the same post, because the above is so important, I will try to keep it up in the first slot until my drama with all these tickets ends. Meanwhile, I have a lot on my mind to share with you. In the almost 30 years, I've been trying to get you people to care that I've learned that Eve was not created from adam's rib but rather that we are all descendants from the apes that populated africa long ago that darwin was correct and that the bible is for people who can't accept the unglamorous truth about ourselves if you were separate from the apes you wouldn't be covering your eyes ears and mouths like monkeys but it's more than the fact that we're all, you're all weak phonies, not we, you. You're all weak phonies in the face of reality. Take a good look around you, and you can see the signs that link us to apes. Many people look more like monkeys than others. Some, uh, I'm going to leave that a little bit more. And I won't name any celebrities and embarrass them as examples, except for Stephen King. The man who jealously killed John Lennon. I have a theory about how we all went for our covered apes to how we went from hair covered apes to elegant looking, nearly hairless, long maned primates. (laughs) Simple mutations caused by factors I don't pretend to understand. 
wow. So the one thing that this guy actually respects and kind of grasps is evolutionary biology. Although temperature and climate and available food sources played a role, caused some apes to become more exotic and sexually attractive to others who may have repulsed the attractive ones, causing them to flee Africa through e Egypt, were, were scattered as far away as they could, and the ones who made it to the British Isles had to be clever enough to travel over the ocean waters. Others had to be have light-colored skin to absorb sufficient enough some vitamin D in a climate where there's not very much sun. Having blonde hair gave them an advantage from being seen by polar bears and from predators, <laughs> as well as allowing them to succeed and breed. Others required short, compact bodies to harness the heat. Okay, he goes on to say how people are different. To make amends for some of the other... Okay. Okay. To make some amends for some of the other remarks about blacks and orientals, orientals are perhaps the most refined of all. My first girlfriend was half Japanese and terrific. The blacks may soon become the most desirable of all races. Indeed, global warming takes up over our planet. And I've been quite intimate with at least one fine black woman as well. What would Brad, Pitt, Brad and Angelina really look like if they had never shaved their legs or armpits and had to live off the land? No shiny makeup or mansions. They'd both be a lot hairier, and Brad would have a beard down to his navel and hair down to his legs. Angelina would be a very attractive primate indeed, even with hairy legs. And for the Scots being more clever, well, it just took one to solve John... Okay, so he's Scottish. That's what it is. And for the Scots being more clever, well, it took one to solve Lennon's murder, and Scotland Yard has been the last word in detective prep. If only I could solve the mystery of why you are too afraid of your government to care about John Lennon's murder and jail his killer, who is currently molesting your children with his horror writing. Uh, so, F+, plus, what did we learn from all this? Well, I've learned that um, I am stupid and not as smart as Stephen Lightfoot. I um, think that everything that I just read is is awful and, and terrible. And uh, it's kind of amazing, though, that he, he got he, he really he really glommed onto evolution, though. Um, I'm going to see what the chat learned. Uh, and is that? Oh, I hear people. Is that so? King Calamari, did you learn anything from all of this? I'll give him time to unmute himself. But wow! Oh, he said uh, he learned how to make. I learned how Jackson Pollock did his artwork <laughs> with paint. Uh, uh. And uh, we have Bading Badinga Ding says, I think we should all be thankful this person saved Bruce Springsteen. Yes, I'm very thankful. Very thankful to our hero. Remember, we're, we're, most of us are too afraid to worship a hero like Stephen Lightfoot. So, so get that fear out of your lives. Learn to love your heroes. And whatever you do, uh, stay away from Stephen King. <laughs> uh, and yes, the news cycles last for 2,000 years. Mr. Mr. Aptonym. Yeah. Uh, I think we are going to go to a break because I think somebody will, is here to help me get to a break. Um, and then coming up next on Garbage Day, we've got a lot of fun people. Who is who's coming up? Um, it's it's the vampire vampirism forum, and you got Bunny Bread and and Isfahan. Oh wait, Isfahan? Oh, is he or not? Uh, Jimmy Franks and let's see, JT. And yeah, King Calamari is going to be doing the artwork. And again, thank you everybody so much for all of your donations. Uh, uh, it's very, I am, I'm very humbled and, and, and so proud of all of you for how much has been raised so far. It's, it's, I think we're beating last year's rate. So keep it up. Uh, thank you again. And we're going to go to break and we'll be right back with vampires. Bye. Goodbye.